Pierce Sellers. This is his third space flight. It may have been his third journey into space, but it clearly never felt like just another day. If you're feeling kind of heroic here, you've got all your gear on, holding a helmet and stuff, and go out to the pad. Huge pad, big shuttle standing there, some steam and stuff coming off Ten, it. Ten, nine, eight. And before you know it, hatch closes, and then you hear this immense roar behind you as the main engines start. Bam, bam. And then the bolts release, and boom, off you go. And it's like somebody letting off a small bomb under your backside, and you're like being pushed up by some giant hand, really fast, launch target, and whew, like that. Watch the Mach numbers go by, times the speed of sound, 80, 20. Now, Mach 25, eight minutes into flight, boom. Engine cuts out, and you go from being crushed into your seat under 3G to 0G in an instant. And everything's suddenly floating around the cabin. And you look out the window and you realize, ooh, I made it to space. This is really something. And it is as beautiful as they say. Pierce was born and grew up in the East Sussex countryside. It was Yuri Gagarin, the first to orbit the Earth. He was six when he saw Yuri Gagarin spinning in space. The day after my birthday. So I thought it was all done for me. Now I thought I was really flattered by the whole thing. And I, I sort of barely understood this, how the world was round and somebody could fly around it. Uh, Apollo 8 Houston, over. There's more profound inspiration to follow. The Apollo 8 mission brings home images that change forever the way we see ourselves and our planet. But really seeing it, you know, a little blue round thing hanging in black space, that's, that's an eye opener. That's real. After university studies at Edinburgh and Leeds, Pierce Sellers eventually leaves for the US in 1982 to work at NASA in an obscure branch of science modeling climate systems. By the time his bosses tell Congress it's possible human activity is changing the world's atmosphere, okay, the hatch is locked up. he's seeing that for himself from outer space. Today's spacewalk continuing now with as Pierce Sellers. He goes walking Fossa. in space six times. And there you are kind of standing up, gliding above the world. It's literally un unearthly. Astronaut Pierce Sellers now in view from... Later on, camera. you know, during the business of spacewalking, there were quite a few periods where you get a chance to look around and it would sink in that you are flying around this huge, beautiful planet and it's curved in both directions. It looks like a country down there. Beautiful. Sun shining off the river. That's gorgeous. Black sky, big blue planet, little tiny clouds all dotted around. It's very, very real, and it brings home to you just where you are and what you're doing. Is there a sense of fragility looking back on the Earth? When you look to the horizon, there's a big curve of the Earth, and there's this tiny, thin film of atmosphere. And you look at that and you say, wow, you know, no surprise that we can affect this very thin layer so significantly with our activities. There isn't much of it. It's just a dusting of gas around the planet. In terms of climate science, is there a moment where you saw a particular measurement and it made your heart race because you thought, actually, this is almost getting beyond our reach? Uh, we've seen a gradual dis decline in the Arctic sea ice. So sometime in the second half of this century, most likely there'll be a, an ice-free Arctic Ocean in the late summer. Yeah, you know, hasn't been one like that for an awful long time on this planet. Same with the Greenland ice mass, we're losing ice at a ferocious rate. You know, it's just melting and dropping off into the Atlantic. These are big changes, and certainly within sort of the lifetime of, of, of you know, people around now and, and future generations, they're sort of irreversible. We're not going to get the ice mass back on Greenland anytime soon. It's going to take uh, centuries. Time is of the essence, not only globally, but also for this British-born pioneer of space and science. Fighting pancreatic cancer, he has no energy to waste on those who would deny what he's lived his life proving. There are people on the Science and Technology Committee on Capitol Hill who don't believe in climate change. Supposedly. Yeah. Supposedly. Mm -hmm. but, well, that's the thing. Do you feel as though there's still work to be done to persuade people? And when it comes to deniers, who I think are in the business of creating confusion and doubt in the public and thereby delaying change, you know, I'd say to them, and, and their representatives, the same thing I'd say to anybody else, you know, the facts don't support your case. The atmosphere is warming, the ice is melting, the sea is rising. You know, we've observed all these things from space and on the surface. They're facts. The scientific debate is done. You know, we, we know what's going on. Given your current situation and your illness, for you, is there 
an added sense of urgency? This urgency drives my urgency. Uh, you know, given sort of finite time left, you know, what's the best way to, to spend my energies? Trying to get the message out that we have to get on with this sooner rather than later, because the two degrees centigrade above pre-industrial level target you know, that we're aiming for is probably manageable within the resources of our global civilization. And you'll find a lot of people who think that a three degree world is not. The stresses would become so great that there would be you know, conflict over very basic resources. Uh, here's a view from Piers's helmet, kind of looking that back. That six-year-old boy who was watching the man spinning around in space, I'd imagine would look at your achievements and the world that you've seen in your career with a sense of absolute wonder. Disbelief, I think. Now, I'm, you know, I've had the luck. I've had the luck to live in, I think, the most exciting 60 years in the history of, of the world since World War II. The pace of technical evolution and of exploration has just been staggering. Mm. Um, it's been exciting just to be alive, right?